Sir, ayo kita lihat dulu ya bentar. Yes, ini. Iya, yes, sorry juga ya, Sir. Ya, so I'll give you uh, two minutes ya to prepare that. Sir, may I go to the toilet for a while? Yes, yes. I give you two minutes to prepare the class, okay? You can go to the toilet first. What? Yeah, you can go to the toilet. I give two minutes for a class to prepare our lesson. Oh, okay. Okay. Let's start our lesson. Yeah. So uh, last time, our previous meeting, we already uh, learned about the properties of waves, right? Uh, how to find the frequency and the period of the wave, how to find the wavelength of the wave, and then uh, what is the phenomenon that the wave have? Like, uh, the, uh, what the phenomenon that the wave have? reflection refraction and diffraction right now today uh, we will discuss uh, the sound wave yeah so you can open your book on page 166 yeah you can open your book on page 166 we will talk about sound wave today okay all right um uh, so as a as a start i will show you the video youtube about sound wave let's hear it In today's video, we're going to look at how sound waves can travel through materials and see how this allows us to hear things. Sound waves are really just vibrations that pass through the molecules of medium. And as sound waves are a type of a longitudinal wave, they travel as a series of compressions and rarefactions. Okay, let's pause it first. So uh, last time you already learned about the type of wave. There are two types of waves, right? Longitudinal wave and what's the other? Transverse. Transverse transversal wave, right? The difference between those two is transversal wave the direction of the wave and the direction of the uh, velocity is perpendicular, right? So the direction of the wave up and down, the direction of velocity right and left, that's transversal wave. In the longitudinal wave, the direction of the velocity and the direction of the wave, yeah, moving is parallel. So sound wave uh, is including to the longitudinal wave because uh, the waves will look like a compression and refraction. Yeah, compress, refract, compress, refract. Yeah. Because it's uh, parallel to the direction of the speed of the sound wave, so we can call, call it longitudinal waves, right? Continue. Compressions are the regions where the vibrating particles are closest together, so all bunched up. Whereas refractions are the regions in between, where the particles are furthest apart, so all spread out. It's kind of weird to explain, but when sound waves travel through a solid, they do so by causing particles inside that solid to vibrate. 
and those vibrating particles will then collide with their neighbors and pass on the vibrations. And as this happens over and over again, the sound wave gets transmitted through the material. Because sound waves need particles to be transmitted, the more densely packed the particles are, the faster the sound travels. This is why sound travels faster in solids than in liquids, and slowest of all in gases. It also explains why sound can't travel at all through a vacuum, because there are literally no particles for the sound to vibrate through. Okay, so uh, sound waves is according to the medium that it uh, needs. So sound wave uh, could we can call it um, uh, what do you call it there? A medium, um, uh, a wave that need, needs a medium. Yeah. So if if this goes to a um, space without any medium, so we cannot uh, emit a sound. Yeah, we cannot emit a sound like a vacuum that means if you are uh, going to the if you if you are an as astronaut you cannot speak with your friend unless you use a radio com yeah now one really important point is that as sound waves pass between different mediums and speed up or slow down their frequency doesn't change the reason this is really important is because if we look at the speed equals frequency times wavelength equation, we can see that if speed is increasing, but the frequency remains the same, then the wavelength must increase instead. So the point to remember is that the wavelength gets longer as sound speeds up, which happens in higher density mediums like solids, whereas the wavelength will get shorter as the sound slows down in low density materials like air. Okay. The fact that sound... Right, okay. So, um... If the sounds uh, going to another medium, yeah, with different mediums, so it will be affecting the speed, yeah. So if the sounds comes from the air, which is a dense, uh, less dense material, into the glass, more dense material, the speed of the sound will be increasing because more more dense means uh, the speed will up, yeah, it will speeding up, and uh, that's what we call it a uh, before we we call it a refraction. Sorry, a refraction. A refraction means when uh, a wave comes to a different medium, it will uh, influence the increasing, also influence the direction of the wave, right? Now, the value or the what do you call it? Uh, the unit, uh, the unit that is constant is frequency. Yeah, the frequency is constant. So if speed is increasing the wavelength also increasing. It changes speed as it moves from one medium to another. It means that sound can be refracted, just like light can. Yeah, sound can also be reflected and absorbed, with hard flat surfaces reflecting most, which is what gives us echoes. The last thing we need to cover is how human hearing works. In this picture here, we can see the entire ear. The important parts to be aware of, though, are the ear canal, the ear drum, the ossicles, which are a group of three small bones, the semicircular canals, the cochlea, and finally the auditory nerve. Whenever sound waves reach our ear, they travel along the ear canal and hit our eardrum, which causes it to vibrate. If we zoom in for a second, we can see that these vibrations will be transmitted along the tiny bones, called ossicles, through the semicircular canals, and into the cochlea. The cochlea then converts the vibrations into electrical signals, and these electrical signals get sent along the auditory nerve to your brain at which point your brain is able to interpret the signals as sounds, with higher frequencies being interpreted as higher pitches, so more like a scream, and more intense signals being interpreted as being louder. The size and shape of all of these structures determines which frequencies we can hear. In general, humans can hear frequencies ranging from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz, but different people will have slightly different hearing ranges, and as we get older, the range of our hearing normally decreases, mostly because of wear and tear of the cochlea and auditory nerve. Anyways, that's everything for this video. Yeah. Uh, I want to explain about this one. The frequency that a person can hear from 20 hertz and 20 kilohertz, we call it, there's another name for this. What do you call it? What is the term for this name? Name of band. Huh? Name of band. The name of the sound. The name of the sound that the frequency is from 20 hertz to 20,000 uh, 20 kilohertz. Decibels. You know, audio. Audio sonic. 
yeah. If the frequency below 20 hertz, the name is, the name of sound is, infra, infrasonic, okay. If the sound has frequency more than 20 kilohertz, we call it ultra sonic, ultrasound, audio sound, infrasound, yeah. So uh, some animals can hear infrasound, some animals can hear ultrasound. Like infrasound, do you know what animals can hear the infrasound, infrasonic sound? Below 20 hertz. Do you know? An elephant and a dolphin, yeah. An elephant and a dolphin. For ultrasonic, ultrasonic sound, what animal can hear that? You know, it's usually this animal in a cave. Bats. A bat, yeah, that's right. It's a bat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think this video. Uh, for the. Yeah. For here. this video. If you enjoyed it, then please do the like and subscribe. And we will see you again soon. Okay, any question about this? Yeah. Uh, according to the form of the wave, it, uh, we can conclude it into. Sorry. Okay. All right. So uh, I'll share this the book. Yeah. Uh, this one. Have you opened your book on page one hundred sixty-six? Okay, so we already uh, listened to the video explaining that sound is including into the longitudinal wave. Yeah, so the sound of music and how it how it sound can be heard by our ears. Yeah, it's because of the air that goes to our eardrums. Yeah, and then it will vibrate, and then it will be um, uh, transferred until uh, into the cochlea. Yeah? Now. Uh, Instrument that are, can produce a sound, we will divide it into three type of instrument. Yeah, if you see, usually all instrument in the world will be divided into these three type of instrument. The first, the instrument with a string. Yeah, string instrument. Yeah, that's how they produce a uh, sound. The second is the wind instrument. Yeah, usually it's by blowing this uh, device, it can create an, a sound. The third is a percussion, percussion instrument. Yeah, we, we can uh, produce sound by hitting the, the percussion instrument. Yeah. So in each case, uh, all of the instrument is made to vibrate. Yeah. That because this will causing the air nearby to vibrate and the vibration will travel through the air to the audience ears. Okay. Now, Let's see what is the speed of the sound, yeah? At the speed of the sound. You can see that on uh, page 168 in your book. Usually the speed of sound in air is about 330 meter per second. Yeah, that's in air. If you convert it into kilometer per hour, it would be 1,200 kilometer per hour. The speed of the sound in air, yeah? It will be uh, uh, increasing faster in the solid material, yeah. So uh, usually, uh, when you uh, put your ears into the table, for example, and the uh, in the end of the other table, someone knocks the table, you will hear it faster than the air actually. Yeah. That is about the speed of the sound in in air, which is one thousand two hundred kilometer per hour, is about ten times the speed of the cars in a major highway. Yeah. So when someone speaks, it seems to us that we hear the sound they make as soon as they make it. However, it takes a small amount of time to reach our ears. Yeah. For example, if you look at uh, the equation, if you're speaking to someone who is just one meter away, so the time for sound to travel between us is one meter divided 330 meters per second equals to three milliseconds. Yeah. 
Yeah, perhaps this is far too short, yeah, to notice because the distance only one meter. Yeah. However, there are occasions when we may notice the time it takes for sound to travel. Yeah. For example, imagine that you uh, shout at a distance from a long high wall of a cliff. After you shout, you may hear an echo. The sound has reflected from the hard surface and back to your ears. Yeah. Okay. Or if you watch people playing a game such as cricket or baseball, you may notice a related effect. You see someone has already hitting a ball. A split second later, you will hear the sound of the ball being struck. Yeah. Right. That, so the time interval between seeing the hit and hearing it occurs because of the sound travels relatively slow to your ears. Yeah. While uh, the light comes to your eyes. Yeah. Okay. All right, this is, uh, you can see the work example in step two. All right, I think this is the work example here. Nah. Yeah, this is also in your book. A man shouts loudly close to the high wall. See figure uh, 12.6, yeah, in your book, it's say 12.6. He hears an echo. If the man is 40 meters from the wall, how long after the south will the echo be heard? Speed of sound in air is 330 meters per second, All right? So this first step is you have to calculate what is the distance traveled by the sound. Yeah, because uh, the distance from the man to the wall is 40 meters. So if you want to hear the echo, that means the distance that the sound travel has to be back to back, right? Goes and then uh, echoing. That means the distance will be twice of the distance from man to the wall. So we multiply 40 meters with two. So it's 80 meters. And then you use the equation of speed equals to distance over time, right? Speed equals to distance over time. So to find the time is distance divided by speed, right? Yeah. Do you familiar to change the, in equation, how to change the subject? You have already familiar with that, right? So if you have the equation speed equals to distance over time. Now, if you want to find time, so you make T as a subject, that will be equals to T equals to S distance divided by speed, yeah? Okay. You're familiar with this, right? Hello? Yeah. If if you are uh, having a hard hard time to use uh, how to change the subject, you can use the triangle, yeah, triangle, and then uh, put a distance on top of triangle, yeah, speed and the time, both of them are at the bottom of triangle. So if you want to find speed, yeah, that means s over t, yeah. If you want to find s, v times t, multiply. If you want to find time, S divided by V, right? Okay, yeah. Okay, continue. Any question? Right, measuring the speed of sound. Yeah. One way to measure the speed of sound in the lab is to find out how long a sound travels uh, a measured distance. Just as you might measure the speed of a moving car or a cyclist, since sound travels at the high speed, you need to be able to measure short time intervals. Yeah, figure 12.7, yeah, here in the uh, slide, shows one method. The first method is by a, a time of flight. Yeah, so method for measuring the speed of sound. The wooden blocks and the two microphones are arranged. Yeah, wooden block and two microphones are arranged in a straight line. The bank from the block is picked up first by microphone one, and then by microphone two, the first activate the timer, the second stop it. The speed of sound is calculated from the distance between the two microphones and the time taken by the sound to travel between them. Okay, do you understand well, this experiment? So the person's uh, creating a sound, the first microphone, microphone one, will uh, trigger the timer to 
turn turn on, right? And as as the sound travel and uh, heard by microphone two, the microphone two will uh, trigger the timer to turn off. Yeah. So the distance that already uh, set, yeah, the distance already set will be divided by the time in the timer, right? So we can find the speed of sound in the air, yeah, measuring the speed of sound. Okay. All right, let's see it first again. Okay. Ah, this one. Different material, different fit. Yeah, this is already uh, explained in the YouTube video. Yeah, as the materials difference, uh, because the dense, the density of the materials difference, so it will affecting the speed of the sound. Yeah, because more dense means uh, the vibration of between each other will be. Uh, Spontan, spontaneous. So it will be, uh, it will be increasing the speed of the sound. Yeah, the, the speed of the sound in air is 330 meter per second. The speed will be will, uh, more than if you have a more dense material. If you read here, in fact, it is more accurate to say that this is the speed of sound in air at zero degrees Celsius. Yeah, so 330 meter per second. If the sound, if the air is at zero degrees Celsius. Yeah, because the speed of sound changes if the temperature of the air changes. If the temperature of the air changes, the speed of sound changes. If it is more humid and so on, note also that some people talk about the velocity of sound, but there is no need to use the word velocity here since we are not talking about the direction in which the sound is traveling. So we just say speed, yeah. Okay, if you see in the table there, on your book also there's a table yeah, on page 170. Some materials will have a, uh, will have a speed of sound data. Yeah, if like mater gas material, air, hydrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, they are having a, a different speed of sound here. Yeah. The, the speed of sound will be higher in gases if the particle is hydrogen. In a liquid, it will be higher uh, velocity, sorry, a higher speed if the uh, material of the water or the liquid is a seawater, right? Because seawater has more dense material than water and mercury. In a solid also like that one, yeah, a more dense will be have more speed, yeah. Okay, now, uh, seeing sound, yeah. So if you are looking for sound, there will be a note like, uh, maybe you can look at the diagram figure 12.8 here. Yeah. Yeah, so to display a vibration of musical note, it is converted to an electrical signal by a microphone and displayed on the screen of an oscilloscope, the trace on the screen shows the regular pattern of vibration of the sound. Yeah, so there is a device, we call it an oscilloscope. Yeah, this oscilloscope is a device to uh, display a wave that is produced, yeah. So this, this uh, black box in front of the flute is the, uh, the receiver, the receiver of the wave, and then it will uh, triggers the data to the uh, oscilloscope. Yeah. Right. Now, if you look from the oscilloscope, like this one, so a uh, period, yeah, a period means uh, one times of frequency. In oscilloscope, usually uh, x axis is the time, and the y axis is the uh, distance or displacement. So it if you look at the graph there, one period, that means from one crest to another crest, yeah. From one crest to another crest, one period. 
and amplitude is the distance from the uh, normal line, yeah, the center line, into the maximum displacement, right? I think we already learned about this uh, last time, yeah. Amplitude, period, frequency. Yeah. Now, uh, differentiating by high and low and loud and soft. Yeah. You can understand how an oscilloscope works by connecting it up to a signal generator with a low frequency node. Yeah. Say 0.1 hertz. You will see that there is a single dot. There is a single dot which moves steadily across the oscilloscope screen. The electrical signal from the signal generator makes it up and down in a regular way. Increasing the frequency makes the dot go up and down faster until it blurs into a continuous line. Changing the setting on, on the signal generators allows you to see the traces for nodes of different frequency and loudness. A loudspeaker will let you hear as well as shown in figure 12.10. Okay, let's see. Now, if you look from the figure here, yeah, figure, there is uh, A and B. Fig, uh, for A, two nodes with the same amplitude and hence the same loudness. Yeah. So the loudness of the sound is uh, represented by the amplitude. Okay. So the, if you look from the amplitude here, it's two boxes. Yeah, it's up. For the, the pictures A in the right side, also two boxes up. So that means the loudness is the same. Yeah. The second has more waves squashed into the same space, so its frequency is higher. But uh, the second uh, wave, yeah, maybe I can use the anode here, uh, this one. So this this wave, because the amplitude is the same, they have the same loudness of sound, yeah. But the uh, the, the pictures in figure 12.10 a, this one has more frequency, yeah. While for b both of them has the same frequency yeah the same frequency means in two box one wave in two box uh, one wave but they have different amplitude this is only one amplitude this is twice bigger amplitude yeah it's twice bigger so that's why it will be loudness in this uh, sound the loudness will be here while this one is uh, very low yeah low loudness yeah, so the loudness is not uh, influenced by the frequency actually, yeah, by the amplitude. How about the frequency? The frequency will be influencing the numbers of sound that you receive, okay? How much the numbers of sound that you receive? Okay, any questions? If there isn't, maybe you can answer the questions uh questions end of chapter questions yeah i would like you to answer end of chapter questions on page 174 okay wait do we have to answer for this one also some question, oh, yeah. I think end of chapter question then. Yeah, end of chapter question. Question number question number two, number four, number six, number eight, and number ten. Okay. What page, sir? Huh? Page berapa? Oh, in your book, it will be on page 174. Okay. Okay. Page 174. You do the even, num uh, even numbers number uh, from number 2 to number 10. Number 2, number 4, number 6, number 8, and number 10. I will create the assignment in the Microsoft team and you can submit your work there, yeah. Okay. Page 174. Sir, when do we submit this? Yeah, today also. I mean, I will, 
uh, if you can uh, finish today, submit it today. Okay. 